Okay, we're going to go over splicing a 16-strand uh, climbing line. This is Arbor Master Bigfoot. Uh, first step is to measure out your marks. There's four marks you're going to make. First mark is going to be down 28 inches from the end of the rope. Then you're going to form your eye of the rope. So you have your two marks forming the eye. Then from this mark, which is mark two, you're going to make mark three, which is 22 inches further down the rope. And then from mark three, you're going to make a mark 11 inches down. Next step is to uh, remove the core strands from the line. And basically we start at mark number three. So there's one, two, and mark number three. So quite a ways, we're going to pull cover out of all of those. Before you start plucking those out though, you want to make sure and tie yourself a knot downstream of mark number four ways. Go back to mark number three and then we're going to pull the core fibers out of here. You got to be careful that you're not going to pull any of the jacket. Get in there, kind of, kind of push these back a little bit. Get down into the middle of the rope. Pull those out and pull them all out uh, through the same same opening too. That's important. So and don't try to do them all at the same time. So there I've got one. And it's sometimes helpful to use a anchor or a post to uh, to help you here. I just put it around one of the strands around a post and just kind of milk it back. And you can just kind of work that. Got just a single wrap around this post. Helps me pull these strands out. Just keep going in, getting more. If you grab all of your cover strands and kind of yard it back against the long end of the rope, it makes it easy to get into that hole where you're trying to get the rest of the cover fibers from. This is usually the last thing I take out is this plastic marker tape that Samson puts in their rope. From the end of your rope, the first mark is mark number one. What you're going to do here is mark, count up five strands from this mark. There's your mark. So one, two, three, four, five. Mark that strand and the one right next to it. And do that five times. So, okay. So there you have your original mark number one and then five chevrons. Those five group sets of two are what you're going to pull out. So before I do this, one thing we don't want to do is pull these strands from this side of the rope. Tie the knot in your rope like the original knot we tied so that it starts right where your, hold, your mark number one is. So anyways, you start, get under the strand you want to pull. Again, make sure not to pull surrounding cover strands. So you get a little little start on it. What I find here for this first one is I'll use uh, vice grips grab on the pulled end only. So remember this all this is going to be removed from your rope. Don't pull this way, pull this way. That'll let you get a little start so you got something to get your finger under. And then pull. You see how it'll bunch up on this side. You don't want that to happen over here. So I'm going to take and again I'm going to use my post to pull. So I do a half wrap and pull, half wrap, pull, and then milk it out. So we got the first one out. Then just go on to your next one. Same thing, gets a little easier every time. The post is still handy. Okay, and this is the last strand. That one. Untie your knot. These you can cut off. Yeah, just do it about six inches or so. Where we're going to form the eye. What we're going to do is bury this part of the rope into your mark at mark number two. Pull it like that until it gets to there. Then we're going to trim these and keep sucking it down until the eye is formed. 
we're going to insert the toss wand into the center of your line. Pulling it back to mark number two, which is right here. You want to bring the wand out between strands. Try not to go through the any of the cover strand. Bring out the snare and place the end of your rope into the snare, and then pull the wand tight. The snare's tight. Now what I do, I bring the rope to the top, pull back a little bit, and then. From the other end, scrunch up the rope. So from this end, scrunch the rope up so you get kind of a fat rope. And then we're going to pull over. So it's starting to bury in. See, we're starting to bury in. Keep her going. And I just go nice and easy, twisting. And there she comes. Pull on the tapered end through. And you'll notice it'll suck these up into the rope. And as they enter, right before they enter, Cut the extra fiber off. And give her another pull. So cut all those off. The eye's not quite done yet. You can see it's still, this is the last little taper section we need to bury. We need to bury to this point. So what I'm going to do now is use a cleat to give me a little help. What I do is I tie your line onto the cleat. Make sure you got a good, and then you're going to pull and suck that eye up and then milk it back. So we've gone a little ways, still got a ways to go, still got about an inch to go there. So what I do is I work that, just soften it a little bit, work it around, then pull and bury. So we're good. And then just work that again. Take your knot off here. And now we're going to zero out that, that the bunching up here by giving a real good pull, and you'll feel it just kind of give right at that point. And milk all that back. Now we got to finish burying the the uh, jacket fibers in the core. Now this is kind of the hard part of the 16 strand splice. It's really not that hard if you if you set it up right, because um, basically we're going to be putting this part of the rope into the original line because this. This part has core fibers in it still. So we're bearing past core fibers like that. Then it's going to come out at your mark number four. So what we're going to do, we're going to use a wire fid. Like that. What we're going to do is go in at point four and run this right along the inside of the rope. Come out at point three. But what we don't want to do is get it tangled up into these fibers. So if we do that and you're trying to pull your berry, it's not going to work. So. And I go to my boat cleat, I tie my core fibers line because you're going to be pulling it this way. So you pull and bunch it up a little bit. So this part is bunched up. That gives you a little more space, makes the rope go out a little bit. And then at mark number four, you're going to go in. And I like to run it on the side where these come out because I want this to come out right, be right between these two so I can grab it and pull it in. So. I'm going to go to the other side. So these guys are on this side, they're not all wrapped around that. So I got my fit in, careful not to pull it too far. And then I put about four or five inches of this line through it and then up to the very top and that'll just kind of pinch and when you pull this what we're going to do is we're going to pull that down get it to right to that point where it's ready to enter make sure these fibers aren't crisscrossed or anything so um, here's where I use my vice grips clamp down make sure you got a good clamp down on the uh, fid get yourself another wrap here so nice and tight so then you just kind of lean into it and yank it back and you'll see it'll come through hopefully there it goes so anyways there's our start of our final berry now what we got to do is trim off all these extra um, fibers that we have but before we do that we got to zero out our rope from this point 
where we tied our knot all the way to the eye because these fibers are all at different lengths in there than where they need to be in the end. So what I do is I put it on my anchor, milk back, just milk it. So I milk that back, milk it all the way, then flip your rope around, use that other eye that was formed from the knot we tied, and start way up in there so you get all those fibers way up in there. Pull back and you'll see this core is just sucking right back up in there. Do that a few times. Okay, so what that gives us, zeroed out point. And what you're gonna do here is mark the two zeroed points. You can mark the core strands, just a little black mark, and a little black mark on your cover strands. And then you pull them back. You wanna expose, you know, six, eight inches between your hole where you're gonna bury and the mark we just made on both sides. What you're gonna do, cut off just inside those marks, just short of the marks. Then what you do is undo this Go back about seven inches or so back. And we're going to taper these up. So you got six strands there left. You're going to taper those starting at the bottom. Now I always go at an angle because this stuff, these fibers will taper really nice up like that. So taper. See, they're all different lengths, tapered nicely, that'll make a nice smooth transition. On the other side, you got a few more fibers. I lay them out, same thing, go back about seven inches or so. Cut, a little longer cut, a little longer. Just every one gets a little bit longer until you get all the way to the end. And that just makes for a smoother line. So, see how those get longer. Fun part, the final berry, complete this. And what we're gonna do, I use both anchors. So I got one eye there and one here. And we're gonna tuck these back up in there. So I start at the ends and just milk back. See how those suck right in there? And there, they're gone. And then zero it out again. You can untie this knot. So that's it, that's your 16 strand ice place with the 5 inch eye.